All right, we've now been joined by William Byron, who was the winner of the spring Atlanta race. And uh, William, welcome back. Thanks for spending some time with us. Yeah. Um, before we get started with questions, just if you don't mind to give us a quick overview of, of kind of obviously coming off the win the, the last time we were here and how your team plans to approach this weekend, no practice, hopefully qualifying um, later today, but, but kind of what is the strategy of, of your team heading into this weekend? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward for us. You know, we um, do our pre-race meeting on Thursday, talk about, you know, strategy stuff and lane choice and, and uh, things of that nature, but there's nothing really at the track that we can prepare for besides qualifying, which is just really trying to hit your shift points and trying to make sure, you know, I do everything on my end to, you know, keep the car wide open and cut as much distance as possible. So, um, you know, pretty straightforward day as far as that goes. And, um, you know, we know that this race is going to be its own beast and um, there's going to be a lot that happens and just try to mentally and physically prepare for that and uh, make sure that you're, you know, studying the things that happened in the last race here because I, I do think it'll be a, a really similar race. It, kind of interested to see how the, the hash marks in the corner uh, change things and see if that, you know, changes anything handling wise or if that just is a uh, visual reference. All right. We'll now go to questions for Willem. If you have one, raise your hand. We'll get to as many people as we can. We're going to start with Jeff and we'll go Jeff, Bob and Nate. Um, first of all, just about the hash marks. Are, are you saying that they might be slippery or something or they might not have as much grip? That's why you say that or? Yeah. Yeah. So typically like when we have hash marks, you know, anywhere you have paint in the corner typically adds some, some grip, um, some front grip sometimes. So could make the cars, you know, move around a little bit more maybe in the, in the banking. And, um, so I'm just kind of interested to see if that is the case. And, uh, there seems like a lot of them, like, like at Talladega, there's maybe there's one and then there's a space and then there's another. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, the other thing I want to ask you is what, what do you think makes has made you a good super speedway racer? Like, what? How have you embraced this to get good at it um, in a short time in your career? Yeah, you know, I think um, when I was younger, like when I was starting out, um, like going back to like maybe the first truck race on a super speedway, I was really nervous and uh, timid and didn't make a lot of moves, and and I ended up crashing um, or getting in someone else's crash, um, and so I was just like, man, this just doesn't make any sense like I feel so timid I feel so nervous the whole time so I just started to take a more aggressive approach to try to try to learn and uh, knowing that the outcome might be the same you know maybe it, I'm gonna crash or, or or whatnot at the end of the race but at least I've at least I've learned something throughout the race and don't feel like I'm just a passenger in the pack you know I, I hated that feeling of just feeling like I was just gonna ride around and hope for the best you know that just wasn't that didn't sit well with me throughout the race so I just took a more aggressive approach all right Bob uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports if you do end up starting 13th if there's no qualifying just how from from what you learned in the spring just you know will it be easy to get to the front is it still difficult to get to the front considering mile and a half super speedway type race yeah I think um it won't be super easy by any means I think um you know, the, the outside lane is, is pretty dominant, um, you know, so trying to pick my way through different battles will be critical, but, you know, like to get some stage points in stage one. So, yeah, we want to try to try to get towards the front and uh, give ourselves a chance at, at points. So, um, yeah, this weekend, you know, is important to kind of uh, try to, you know, try to go for those stage wins because that's what, you know, everyone's after is those playoff points right now. All right, Nate. Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. I got a couple. Uh, William, I, I'm sure you don't need me to frame this for you, but y you won this race, and then you win Martinsville a few weeks later, and then in the 10 races since Martinsville, I think you have one top 10, zero top fives. Is that just, has it been circumstantial? Has the speed been there? Um, uh, what are the reasons for the slump? And, and coming here, we won already. Are you are you looking forward to kind of turning it around from here on? Yeah, certainly looking forward to turning it around. You know, we've been it's been a rough stretch and it's not been from a lack of effort. Like we've, we've put in, I feel like, I feel like for a couple weeks there, um, you know, you're still riding the high of winning Martinsville, getting your second win, you know, all those things. So we kind of went to Bristol, uh, dirt, which is its own beast. And then Talladega is his own beast and, and still had some good runs at Talladega. Um, 
and s- and then yeah, we just we just got on a, r- a rough patch there. You know, we really just and and it's not been like we've had speed like like Darlington obviously had speed. Kansas weirdly in the race had a flat tire and um, damaged the whole underbody of the car and had no no speed after that. So um, that showed us how important that was. And then and then yeah, there's been a lot of other races where like Charlotte qualified fifth, ran in the top five for the first half of that race, and we made a strategy decision to to short pit that stage. Um, given how many cautions there were at Charlotte, we were running out of tires, so we restarted 18th and and unfortunately got in that crash that took out you know 10 cars plus. So. Um, it's just been tough. I mean, there's been maybe one or two races where we just didn't have any speed. I think Gateway, uh, Gateway, we were really bad. Um, that was a wake up call for sure. And and then there's been a couple that we've been like last week. We had a loose wheel. Fortunately, didn't come off. And uh, we were running eighth at the time after starting way deep um, in the pack. So it's been circumstantial things. Um, but yeah, the results don't look good at all. But but it's we know that the majority of the time i'd say 75 percent of the time we've had the speed to compete it's just been a lot of a lot of circumstantial things that um some in our control and some and a lot out of our control honestly you know parts failures nashville we had a steering rack so you know i wouldn't say that we're not trying it's just it's just been tough to just put a smooth solid weekend together which is honestly what was making us win races we were just you know we're we were a top five car and and uh, executing the way we needed to to put ourselves up front. Gotcha. Uh, and then uh, secondly, just curious, uh, uh, news broke this week that apparently the Chicago street race could be a reality next year. I'm just wondering, you know, wh- what when you think of street race, like I guess one, you've probably never done it, but two, do you have any ideas on how NASCAR should approach that, doing yeah. a street race in the Cup Series? Well, so. You know, I'm very skeptical. Uh, I drove it on iRacing. Um, iRacing does a great job with the tracks. And, uh, you know, I, if it's anything like that, it's very, very narrow. So we're, we're going to have some work to do on some to, – to create some, you know, a passing lane. You know, I'm not I – don't, I don't think it's a matter of just making the track super wide so it's, you know, so there's room for error, but there has to be a passing lane, you know. So we have to, we have to be able to get inside of somebody under braking and – and not just uh, hit the wall. So I think there's some work to do there to get the track, you know, a little bit wider, a little bit more, you know, room for us to, to race each other. But um, I think it's a cool idea. I mean, that atmosphere should be great and should be exciting. I mean, I've not been to Chicago much, but should be exciting. All right, Mark. So, uh, f- uh, Mark Darrow, PR, and a follow-up on, on Nate's question. Are you surprised you, you won, two, won the two races pretty quick right out of the box, and despite the circumstances and different things that you've just talked about, surprised it, as now you, s- you come to Atlanta the second time and it's still just two wins, hardly any numbers, so to speak, over the, over the summertime or the spring uh, and summer to this point? Yeah, yeah, definitely surprised. I mean, if you, if you would have told me, if you would have summarized, you know, our first half of the season, because uh, we, I mean, this is a halfway point. So if you would have summarized it to me and told me that we had two wins, but, you know, our results are nowhere near. Like like last year, we, we had like 10, I think we had like 10 races in a row that we finished in the top 10 or something ridiculous. So, like, we were a really consistent team. So it's not like we're doing anything different. It, we don't have really any different pieces on our team than last year. Um, I think we've got a better pit crew than we than we had last year. They're, those guys are really fast, um, you know, and we just had, you know, misfortune and issues, and um, we just have to keep showing up with with putting the effort in. You know, I think we're – after the after the first handful of races went, went poorly, uh, we started to put more effort in and started to focus even more on details. And unfortunately, that stuff hasn't showed up yet, but um, eventually that – that work that we're putting in is going to show up and hopefully it's this weekend and hopefully, you know, New Hampshire is a big test for us to see, you know, how competitive we are there too. Speaking of New Hampshire, what kind of race do you think, given what happened at Gateway, a similar track, as far as the racing is concerned, what kind of race do you see up there? Well, I think um, it all depends on what, what the track, you know, looks like, uh, what they do with the PJ1 and how they um, how they set it up. Uh, luckily, going to be able to run Xfinity that weekend, which I'm excited about. Um, you know, have run one Xfinity race so far this year, and uh, finished second. It, it was a lot of fun at Texas in those cars. So, 
excited to see how the track kind of plays out there. And then um, in the cup car, I think, you know, this car requires different lanes, but it's really good if there's multiple lanes. So um, I think it should be a good race. I mean, you're able to kind of get air on the nose at New Hampshire in a lot of, a lot of instances. So should be a good race. All right. William, th okay. Oh, sorry. We'll take one final question. You mentioned uh, Jason McDonald, Core 360 Sports. You mentioned earlier about coming back here after winning. So what's your comfort level having raced here already? It was a new track. Now you're coming back for a second bite at the apple. And um, uh, how do you think your car will handle in terms of uh, having been here and being able to diagnose everything already? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's going to get better, so it's not going to be near as easy as it was the first time around. You know, I think everyone gets a chance to look at, you know, the data and look at, you know, what worked and how I kept the lead and stuff like that. So it's not going to be as easy to fend people off for sure. Um, so it's just going to be adapting as this race starts. You know, it's kind of the same thing we did the last time. You just adapt and um, learn as we go and hopefully um, – yeah, I'd like to lead a bunch of laps like we did last time, but it's going to take a lot of learning to, in the first stage, to kind of get there. All right, William, thanks for your time this morning. We wish you the best of luck this weekend. Thank you.